Curse. Upgrades. Welcome back, everybody, to the greatest crossover between JVS and Big Go Belt Media. Nat here and Terrell to talk about the last and final episode of The Wheel of Time, Season 2, Episode 8, What Was Meant to Be. Uh, so many feelings, so so many predictions that we had from last week going into this. Uh, I, I feel dumbfounded, and I apologize for I, I apologize for one thing. And I and I stand by what I said the entire time for another, and I and I'll get into that. And I was just want to say I was right. I was right. I was right. Um, this episode was uh, directed uh, by uh, the legendary uh, Sanaa Hamry, uh, who we both had the pleasure of doing an interview with this week, uh, which both of our interviews turned out completely, di uh, of course, different di different questions. Uh, I felt like uh, she she was just schooling me, like she was giving me all the knowledge that I needed. She she was. Product, pro, proper pronunciation, everything was on point during the interview. But uh, I say that to say, check out both of our interviews uh, with with the director on both of our channels. Uh, very very good time, very good conversation. Uh, but yeah, uh, before we even get into this, you know, the same thing. Um, do you, I mean obviously you you know like you read do you, did, did you read the books? But did this kind of hit expectations for you for what you wanted to see? Like visually, like, did you think they did they do a really good job for you bringing everything in this chapter that you thought you were going to see? They did ran dirty, but <laughs> but 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 I think it's kind of a catch twenty two because this is a group effort to defeat the dark one. Yes, or it will be, and I think this is the season for them to really establish that and to include certain other players who are just as important. So. As much as they did ran dirty, and as much as I know that there's actually cool stuff that ran does that comes later, I'm concerned that for fans that have been waiting for ran to do something, I don't know if this will be a complete turn off and if that will, you know, maybe preclude people to maybe like lose faith in the show. You like, I'm assuming you liked it, but. I'm concerned that maybe others who maybe had higher expectations, I know the book clubs are gonna have a field day with this, but some of the changes I understand. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more, but mm, I knew about Hopper y'all and I still cried. I was like, I wasn't, I was trying not to, but I was like, damn it, I'm crying again. But my favorite moment, was when Matt blew the horn. I was like, I was, I was cheering. Yeah, but well, we'll get into that. Hmm. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like, like I said, um, you know, a lot of expectations on Matt. Like, I, and I and I didn't have obviously not have the knowledge of anything coming. Uh, I didn't expect the the Hopper moment and a lot of other things. But um, yeah. Um, great, great, great episode overall that I, I enjoyed. Uh. And I pray to God we get that season three. But let's get into episode eight uh, of season two. Um, so as, as we jump right back into this, uh, we we come back and we get a little preview of 3,000 years ago and we see all the Forsaken. Uh, uh, no, just the Shamayo. It, it was it was Luz Theron and his companion mm. uh, sealing a Shamayo into the seal that we saw in season Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, why does this feel like it's supposed to be familiar to me? Like, uh, was it knowledge that I missed? So, okay, that that makes a lot of sense. And then you know, they as they say, you know, it's a repeated, uh, it's a repeated moment that you know stuff keeps happening, happening. Uh, but we get a preview of kind of like the relationships there, um, mm -hmm. and what his relationships were with you know his, I guess his friends uh, at that time, because um, we know these uh, these beings are like you know I guess want to. I don't want to say immortal because they could still be killed uh, or like sit like, I mean, I guess sealed away is not the same as like being, being killed. Like you just kind of reincarnate. You just kind of come back. Uh, I feel like they, they kind of explain that a little bit of uh, the same thing with uh, Matt and like the soul of the dragon reborn, you know, as you know, they keeps going in the cycle, endless cycle and the next person becomes the dragon and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I, I feel like they kind of explain that. I mean, am I missing something here or did, did I, did I explain this reincarnation thing with them? Like just well, weird. 
Well, I think Ishii's goal was to just stop reincarnating and to just stop, um, you know, that cycle, the wheel, um, from regurgitating, recycling people right. into this earth to relive a life. And sometimes their lives are very similar, and then sometimes it's very different. So it just depends on the person. So um, for Ishii, he wanted it to end, period. And I right. think he finally got his wish, at least on his part, even though he went about it in a way that he probably wasn't even expecting. So it was very interesting, that whole thing. So, But yes. Uh, in a general sense, you can um, reincarnate and you know live different lives, and that was yeah. in in this yeah. episode. But as far as Ishi and the Forsaken, um, they're them from three thousand years ago. They were just sealed, kind of like in a uh, asleep, so to speak. They were conscious, they were aware that they were sealed, but they couldn't really do much. So now they're like out. So they're themselves from 3,000 years ago. They're not reincarnated. That's the difference. Oh, okay. Almost like a cryo sleep type thing. Yeah. And they just, okay. that, that that makes a lot more sense now. I'm like, oh, okay, they're just like immortal beings. They can't die. Okay, what's going on here? Well, uh, they did establish that Lanfear was granted um, like immortality. And we kind of saw that when she was able to resurrect herself. From right, it. yeah. Throat flashed and stabbed. <laughs> And so the dark back. one, for some reason, granted her that ability, but we're not sure that if he granted anyone else that ability. So, hmm. yeah, she got back up in like five minutes. I was like, oh, okay. So she, that's why I thought that I thought that ability extended to all of them, not just just her. When I initially ironically, I'm, um, mm, I, I, mm, I don't know if I should say anything. So I'll just leave it alone. For Lanfear, she was able to come back. But again, there's more to it than that that I can't get into. Okay. Well, season season three it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we kind of we jump back into you know we see Moraine and Lan. Um, they get pushed out of a portal by Lanfear um, and uh, Ran. You know, of course, is you know, trying to hey, I, I don't trust you. I don't want to be with you. X Y Z. Like I don't I don't know what your goal is. And to be clear, I mean he's just as confused as the audience is because I don't know what's going on. And what what her what her role is or what she's trying to do, um, and even still by the end of this episode, it's still very unclear uh, who's winning this chess game. Um, it, it's it's weird. It's like so clearly she and, and they tell you from the get go, hey, you know, she's like, I'm going to portray, I'm going to portray you. Is she like? And I understand like where the confusion was when she actually did it. When she had been saying it for like seven episodes. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, uh, uh, everybody's like, yeah, he they, he said that you were going to do it. Yeah, she she said that she was going to do it. Like, we're, is anybody else not seeing this? Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so she she she's pushes Moraine and Lan out there. They're in the middle of nowhere. They're trying to figure out what's going on. This right here at the beginning, like as we're getting to all this and just kind of the pacing, had me really thinking about what you said last week about how it was feeling kind of rushed. Um, and even to me, not reading the books, it it, it did feel rushed to me because there was a, so many things I felt like should have took more time, should have had a little bit more seasoning, and it was just like, okay, let's 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 get it going, let's get this going, let's make this happen. Um, and, and I felt like that was definitely okay. Hurry up and put uh, Moraine and Land right here. We're not gonna get any of the conversation, any of the walking, or you know, we had the last episode of what was going on when they first walked through the portal. It's it's like okay, they walked through the first time, and then they just get pushed out, and okay, here we go. Um, so, but I, but I could definitely feel the the pacing of it being like, okay, let's let's hurry up and wrap this up within within an hour. Yeah, in some ways it was rushed, and in other times I was like, what what are y'all doing? Y'all taking a little too long. So it was kind of all over the place. But yeah. the moments that they sat with, for the most part, were good. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have a problem. I mean, like, definitely. I mean, every everybody had everybody had a moment here. Um, right after that, we cut back to Perrin, who's finally getting some screen time uh, after you know eight episodes. I feel like I can count, I can count on my hand how many how much time he's actually had within the show within eight episodes. Um, and he is with and, and what, what's her name with the with the hood? Abienda. 
Um, yeah, yeah, she's with them. And I feel like they mentioned something here about the dream space, dream space, because I wrote that down. I'm like, okay, did I maybe I misheard that she she had mentioned the dream space or something like that as they're walking. It, it's a saying that uh, the IEL have. It's pretty much she was saying people are going to die today. That mm. that that was the interpretation. <laughs> I, th- I, th- gonna... I, th- I thought yeah. it was a, a reference to Lanfear's like you know, that that ability they were using in the dream. The dream. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, I... That was pretty much saying folks going to die today. <laughs> um, we then get into the conversation I just made a reference to. Uh, with Ishi and Lanfair talking, and again, uh, we, we she told you like this is going to happen. I'm not, you know. He's like, "What are you planning? At? Why'd you bring, you know, why'd you bring him here? What's going on? That wasn't the plan." At this moment, again, we she already told you she was going to do this. Um, has this been rewritten anyway for the show versus the book? Like as far as like everything up to this point, like the the way it's paced out, the the conversation between them two. Like everything, everything leading up to this moment. Um, there were several parts that they changed. Again, they they're incorporating um several parts from books two and three, mostly book two, but definitely some elements in book three. And I even want to say the foreshadowing in this episode definitely hinted at more books to come. So, uh, <laughs> as far as the infighting with the Forsaken, that's a given that has been something that's in the books. Um, but how they went about it in this particular episode is different because again, they're combining a few things and they're moving some things up and pushing some things back. So it's a it's a little bit too bold. Mm. Okay. That, that 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 makes sense. Like uh, I was I was wondering like how many like okay well we still is season two still within the same book or are we are we somewhere we somewhere else at this point? Like every four or five episodes is like half the book. I get half a book, I guess. If they episodes. did like a good mix, but I think the majority of what they did this season was book two, but they incorporated elements of book three because book two and three are very similar as far as like the pacing, what happens in, in both books as far as there's not much movement. Some people disappear and they're not there like half the book so it's kind of like okay we might as well just combine these two so um so again definitely i want to say maybe 60 percent the great hunt and 40 percent the dragon reborn okay so it's a fair ratio i feel like it, it, i mean book readers if y'all can let me know in the comments like ratio wise like what did you think as far as books two and three like how how much was the great hunt and how percentage wise because I feel like it's about 60 40. Right. Um, Maybe even 70 30. <laughs> right, right here, we start to kick off, um, of, you know, where I had to pull up to the edge of my seat. And I'm like, okay, it's it's about to get real. This is, this, we really, we about to, we about to have an episode, uh, season one, episode eight moment, because that seems to be how they, they want to use this episode as like the, the catalyst of the, the entire season, obviously. Um, and, you know, we, we get a, another battle. That pops off here in in the city, which I didn't think was going to happen so fast. I'm like, okay, maybe it's going to be another season. I'm like, okay, so and, th- and this is where like kind of the pacing just starts to jump. Um, we we see um, you know everybody getting ready for this this battle, this war. Uh, we see Raina 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 uh, threaten to cut uh, Egwene's uh, tongue out uh, if she d- disobeys her. Which I'm like, at this point, man, she's about to get free. Like, is this like this? It's come on. <laughs> um, which I was a little bit confused because I felt like at the in the end of the last episode we saw Nanive and Elaine pop in the room where she was. Maybe I missed saw that. Um, no, that was a preview, but it looks like she was getting ready. She put the clothes on where they were at, but okay. it just looked like yeah, it looked like she was at the cell when really she wasn't. They needed to make their way to where the queen was. Okay. Yeah. It took too long, and if I'm being quite frank, it was. <laughs> but I think with the chaos and everything, it was kind of like they had to move cautiously. But yeah, yeah. De- definitely took a time. I'm like, all right, come on. Like, <laughs> um, like I said, we we see her, you know, talk about cutting off their tongue after the, you know, the first she disobeys her the first time, um, and then threatens to cut off her hands. 
if she does it the second time. I mean, at this point, she's done it at least 10 times. Like, at this, if you was going to do it, you was going to do it. I, I almost feel like this sense of, like, um, between between her, like, she was a little bit more sympathetic to Egwene, you know, letting her keep her name, you know, the way she was treating her. Um, I feel like she could have did worse, um, you know, Again, I'm not sure the time, the time that she was there. They they make it come across like it's just a few days. Uh, I'm not sure if the time the time difference in the book and the show is it kind of depicted the same way. Like, is it a few months? Like, they finally decide to come rescue her. She's there like a few few weeks. Um, so. I want to say it's more weeks than um, definitely not days. Um, yeah, it definitely felt like it was like three days. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they, unfortunately, they don't really do a good job of really saying, like, how many days, how many weeks. I mean, you can kind of glaze from how long Karen has traveled to get to foam that maybe it was, you know, a couple of weeks or, you know, at least a week or something. Um, so that I guess that's our way of seeing how much time has passed. Right. Um. <laughs> We see, uh, we, we like I said, we, we finally cut to that scene with uh, Nani even and Egwene. Uh, and uh, I, I'm just, I'm gonna say it right now. I, I'm just gonna say it right now. I, I was gonna try to hold off. Let's can we just give the most do your rant, do your rant, be the most useless character award to, to, to her right now. Like, what was even the purpose of you being here? Like, <laughs> I, I just don't understand. And, and look, I, I really enjoyed this scene right here where she's able to torture. When she's able to torture her and really and they really explain how it works like how this collar works how this power works from from the other side i really enjoyed that scene but then right after that she serves no other purpose like no other purpose i'm like th there's literally a scene where your friend gets shot and you're just sitting here like i i just i just don't know i just don't know what to do how have you not figured this out by that why did we waste so many episodes watching you go through these freaking arches for you still to have no point, like at least within the, the this season, I just don't understand. And 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 again, I had the same conversation with uh, our let our director here for this episode, and I explained, you know, explaining to her why, like I get it, I understand the hero's journey method that we're doing here, but it's it's just so many other things. It's just so annoying about this character, and I just don't understand, like. I don't know. I'm impatient. I really want her to be at a level that she's supposed to be because we know what she can do. And I feel like that that gets that baton gets passed to a completely different character, which I already expected it to be. And I and I really appreciate them for doing that. But I just don't know what Nani was doing here. Get, shout out to the MVP Egwene in this episode. I'm sorry, Elaine in this episode because she's now my favorite character in the show. Yeah, I like <laughs> Elaine now just because at least at least you can heal. <laughs> I'm like, what? What are you doing? Like, I'm sorry. Um, um yeah. okay, yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little disappointed with Nynaeve this episode because she does a lot more in book two and book three than what they established here. But I have a feeling. I do think, in a general sense, the Great Hunt was a way to really establish how important a queen is and for her to go through what she goes through. Right. So for her to do what she does in this episode was important. There was definitely foreshadowing with it. So unfortunately, it's kind of like they couldn't have everybody take, you know, a forefront. It's kind of like, I have a feeling because Rand and I need for kind of like established as far as like what they can do how powerful they are, what have you. This season was pairing Matt and Egwene's uh, opportunity to show us why yeah. they're important. So in this finale, did the same thing. At the end, I was like, squat up. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, for me, they could have at least given a little more na for Nynaeve. She could have at least been angry enough to do something. She is capable of being creating an angry scenario in her head enough to to power to uh access the one power and they it's kind of like they did it in the first uh episode but then they didn't do it again 
So they could have at least had her do it a couple more times to at least, okay, at least she's able to channel just when she she has to create an angry, she has to be angry in her head in order to do so. So they could have done a better job of giving us that. Because she could have healed Elaine. Oh, and I'm I think sorry. and she okay. could have been, she could have healed Rand. Or at least, you know, <laughs> healed it temporarily, but they didn't give her let her do that. But again, they let Elaine they showing us how important Elaine is. So I don't know. I, it's kind of like y'all need to do better as far as um, the show. And I'm not necessarily blaming the director, but as far as the writing, y'all need to do better as far as like making sure people have their moments to shine, but at the same time, don't push people all the way back that you're like, what are they there for? Yeah. And I think that's what happened with my name this season in the um, latter half. I'm sorry, was your friend getting shot in the leg not enough to trigger something for you? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm literally like, okay, she's about to have her Gohan moment. Sorry. It's, she's about to have mm-hmm. about to unlock this this Super Saiyan, you know, whatever. Oh, oh, she's, oh, oh she's about to go off. I, 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 was, I, I was expecting <laughs> it. I was expecting it too, but it didn't happen. She she got her up, she got her up to Rand and Egwene up at the tower. <sighs> She, mm. she, spent, she spent more time looking at how she was going to get to the tower instead of actually getting to the tower. Uh, and then when you got and then when you got there, somebody else had to step up to the plate for you again. Oh, what do I do? I'm just looking. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I, I yeah. was about to write an apology to her. Like, oh, she's about to have it. She's about to have her moment. She does not have her moment mm-hmm. at all. Anything other than put this no, armor on and torture the one check. Uh, she was enjoying that a little too much. I was like, dang, Nani, is that how you're going to push your anger? Yeah. Torturing uh, the soul. Now, granted, the soul don't deserve it, but I'm just saying, like, you, it's like you set us up, and then what happened? Nah. Disappointed. <laughs> Disappointed. I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah. uh, we uh, we see Matt. Uh, you know, get get comes one to one again with the knife. Now, Paul, what was the name of the character, the black character that br- that brings the knife? Because I keep hot on Fane, and they didn't utilize him nearly as much as I was hoping they would. I'm like, where was he at? We've seen him. We've seen him all of ten seconds of the entire season. If I had to count, maybe yeah, maybe thirty. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they didn't utilize him at all. At least not how i was hoping they would now i don't know if they're trying to do something later with him but for now they should have established how important he is too and i didn't get that this season how do you get the knife um he must have gotten it from leandrin it's really hard to tell because what they're saying is matt was going to go after the dagger at the white tower and somehow Pot on Fame got the knife. He probably got it from Leandrin. I don't know how Leandrin got the knife. Um, uh, somewhere in episode six, that it's a scene that we didn't see. I would have liked to have seen that scene because then we would have known for sure how Pot on Fame got the knife. Um, and we know, unfortunately, this was probably on the cutting room floor too. Last season, he he managed to use the ways, even though you're supposed to use the one power to use the, the ways. They didn't really do it a good job of explaining how he was able to. But um yeah, this season Pound on Fame was underutilized to me. Um, especially given what I know of Pot on Fame. Ooh, ooh, I mm, that was a disappointment too this season. I mean, Amazon, if you wouldn't mind, can you can you give me can you send us the deleted scenes? Just just so I can get a little bit more context. Cause I'm literally like, wait, what? When when it's so many it's so many what moments in this in this in this episode like okay when when did that happen? When so that okay, happen? so there was another scene that apparently got on the cutting room floor because I'm I'm probably putting it out there, but when we get um, screeners, sometimes we have you know things that we're not supposed to reveal unless we're doing a show like this and it's after it airs. Hmm. So one of the things that they mentioned in that um, in episode seven, I didn't see it. So I'm like, where is it? Where is this scene? Because I thought I missed it, but it wasn't there. And I'm just like, 
why say that if you're not going to put it in the episode? So, um, yeah, I, I don't understand. So there, there's some things that happen off screen that I'm just like, y'all should have just yeah. put it off. I, I, I mean, I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and again, I'm talking to you as as somebody that's not read anything going into this. It, if it didn't make sense to me, and I'm vis- and you're showing it to me visually, then it, then you, you dropped the ball somewhere. <laughs> like I should not be questioning what way what. <laughs> I, 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 okay, sorry, but yeah, that that the whole knife thing and 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 Matt, you know, t- saying, "Hey, I'm not going to touch it." Um, could he have just like pressed it on him, put it in his hand, like? Uh, what, what was stopping him from throwing? Can he throw it up against them? Like <laughs> I mean, he has to physically palm, like palm the knife. Like how? how I, I I think they wanted to make it his decision um, that he succumbs to the dark, so to speak, uh, to the knife and the dagger. But he didn't. Um, he said "f you." So, and that's the match that I know and love. He's like oh. "f you." So I, I've been waiting for this Matt to make an appearance because <laughs> he was kind of making an appearance in book three. <laughs> so I was, and he created the Usher and I, and I'm just like, oh, it's going to be on and popping now. I am with it. Yes, this is the Matt. Yes, this is, this is yes. Um, so, but this is very different to how he's using the dagger because Padon Thane has the dagger a lot longer. Um, Mm. Mm. Yeah. But right. still an interesting, interesting way that they're doing it. He's he created the Ashranda using the dagger versus a different knife. And I'm hoping that we can still eventually get rid of the dagger. Um I feel like that was more beginning of book three. But then Padam Fane took it again. So mm. so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out um i um and again i I'll, 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 I'll back and i said i'll hey i I'll, I'll eat it and say i look i was wrong about matt he he um he came back and he served the purpose that i was not expecting him to serve i thought he was just gonna be the guy that killed his friend and uh they swerved me and uh <laughs> which you know i Hey, yeah, that's you know, and wrestling, you know, I should have saw it coming, right? Um, but again, uh, Matt serves a bigger purpose in, in less than 20 minutes than Egwene, I'm sorry, Nanive does the entire this entire season. Um, what's, what's up, man? He, he, he can't channel, <laughs> and, he, and he, I mean, he, he definitely still did what he did. But, but uh, you know he, that that whole that whole moment with him was was pretty cool. Um, we see uh, Lan and Moraine here have this intimate moment on the beach. Oh man, just so so passionate. Babe, please let me in. I, I, I've been I've been I've been missing I've been missing your touch. Please, let's let's reestablish this bond. I I know you want to. Please, just just hug me the way you used to. And then she comes in and admits, "Look, I'm trash." You were the better. You were the better of us both. Uh, <laughs> you know, please. Uh, you sure you want to do this after how I treated you? And you talk about a toxic relationship here. This guy needs to. He could have left. <laughs> he could have left and been done with this. No, let me back. I want more. Let me back in. Your thoughts on this scene and how they did it? The person. <laughs> I okay. So I was wondering how they were going to show someone bonding. Mm. Because we do see that in the books with different characters. But it's kind of like a new spring moment, but present in a sense. So new spring is the prequel. So um, it was kind of like a reintroduction of Lana Maureen uh, as far as their bond, which was nice. Um, Again, that scene was like, I, I wish they picked it up a little bit as far as the pacing. I was like, okay, y'all taking a little too long. I want to get back to other folks. But it was still a beautiful moment because I'm glad that the audience gets to see how a bonding works, mm-hmm. especially with the threads of the spirit and how it ties them together. That was well done. So mm-hmm. I got to give them kudos for that because it, it it's showing us, we've been hearing about it for two seasons. 
we're actually seeing how that process works for people that are willing to bond with each other. So I'm glad that they showed us with Lana Moraine. This is the, technically, this is the first like two people or eyes to die on water that we see with a bond. So I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, I, like I said, I, like I said the, the little swirl and like the the strings. I, like I said, I thought that was pretty cool too. I was I was wondering if they were I was actually I was wondering if they were actually going to show them rebond and how how they would do it. And I, like you said, they did a really really good job of, of showing this. And then as soon as it, they did it, man, it was back to back to action, back back to you know back to the moment. Yeah, it was it was reminiscent of season one and how they were in sync with each other. And how he was her guard while she had to do what she had to do. She came in clutch. So questions about the bond here. Um, mm-hmm. Does that mean, and I feel like they really haven't explained it to me as well, what he knows, she knows, she knows, he knows? Well, they can feel each other's feelings. Or, you know, kind of like sense their um, next move. It was kind of explained in the comments in one of our other earlier episodes. Like mm. they don't really necessarily read minds, but they they are connected enough that they can kind of like sense what the other may do. So um, I, I asked that because I was like, okay, does Land know about her relationship with uh the um man, what is her name? The, the well, they the, can mask certain things, um, mm. which is again what what Moraine did. Uh, in episode six, when she saw Swan, she masked the bond, so he couldn't feel her do to do or her feelings while doing the do uh, with Swan. Uh, so that can be established. And then with Maxim um, mentioning that with his bond with Ivan and Alana, like they're only um, they only sense each other or the mask is, or the bond is unmasked when they're in battle and they need to be able to be in sync with each other. So that's the only time that they're really in each other's heads, so to speak, as far as senses, emotions, all that other stuff. Um, And something that tells me that Alana and Ivan probably have their bond unmasked, probably because they're more in love with each other, but I don't know. Yeah, that, that definitely uh, makes makes a lot of sense. Uh, also, just kind of re, re reminds me, um, why we was there just no time to figure out what happened to someone like, like what that whole transition. Like- we, we no, we'll probably get that at the beginning of season three. Um, okay. I'm glad that they didn't touch on that because I we needed to focus on Fong. We needed to hmm. focus on our fat five. Okay, even though they didn't do much. But we still need to focus on our Fat Five and some of the other players and foreshadow things to come um, with uh, the characters. So, okay, I'm, 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 I'll accept that. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> um, I, I wrote this next note as, uh, oh, oh, we're getting our family reunion that we've waited for eight episodes for. Uh, we, we've got our Avengers assembled. Uh, but we're, everybody is now, hey, you're alive. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, we, we got that moment here. Um, and then, like I said, at, at this point, like I felt like they 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 put the, this is where the episode started to kick off in hyperdrive. Like, okay, let's let's keep it going. Let's go. Oh, no, okay, no time to talk. Let's, let's go. Scene, action, action. Uh, which I thought the action in this episode, by the way, was really, really good. Um, very, very well choreographed. Um, Choreographed. Um, if they weren't actually killing people in the show, I wouldn't even know. Um, it look, this this looks really really good. Arrows to the face, neck, you know, just amazing. They did, so shout out to the stunt team, everybody that did that. This is really really good. I, I definitely enjoyed it. This is what I wanted to see in my episode eight in my season finale, um, and, and they did they did a really really good job. Um, well, we got a little more close and personal, whereas we were supposed to get a bigger battle scene last season, and we as far as in, like in a field, like a large field, but instead we had to get what we got. Um, so this, I really thought it was a nice touch that the white folks were on the fog and that they were, they actually were com- a little confident. I have to give them props. Like the white clothes actually felt confident <laughs> as far as planning a battle, executing a battle, even, and they tried to get the people 
to side with them so they can get rid of the Sanchan. And they established the fact that they were slavers and this is something that wasn't right, at least Bornholm. Valda, mm, but um, that there are at least a few white clothes with a good head on their shoulders, but Bornholm's now dead. Okay, we're gonna get into that. But I'm just saying, the white clothes were actually confident and I was actually impressed with them. So I gotta give them props. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Even though I still hate them, but they they they, they were a little confident. I'm like, okay, y'all, I see you. okay. Yeah. Did they plan this this out to happen on the same day at the exact same time, or was just pure coincidence? Was one of those those wheel weave type things? Mm -hmm. like, it was wheel weave. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No, no, no further explanation. Right. <laughs> um, we kind of cut back to Egwene here, and she's getting uh, kind of getting the back of a little bit more sense of control, even though she got a hair cut off, which seemed like that really hurt her. Uh, I wasn't. It, it did, especially with her braid. That wasn't. Her brain was important, so to was cut that, like that was. Thing? Did I miss that, or was that like a family thing? Well, the braiding, I thought, I thought I've mentioned it. I've mean, been talking to other people about it, but um, or other reviewers like Dusty Will and all them, they were talking about the braid or whatever. But um, it may have been uh, no everyday Negroes, my bad. But anywho, the braid is important because back in season one, it was a milestone for her to become a woman braiding her hair mm. uh you know you're alone but never alone when i was saying that back in episode eight and then at the beginning of season one episode one it was part of their ceremony she got thrown in the water so that oh. was that was her sense of home and they cut that off so yeah that was a blow okay that that's that's what i was thinking and i was just like uh, okay maybe it's just something else but she was hurt <laughs> she's she even hurt. i was gasping like oh yeah, they showed that. Oh, oh, she doing dirty, dirty. Okay, we doing it. <laughs> I'm uh, like, I'll get her, Egwene, please. <laughs> she's definitely gonna die this episode. That that sucks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we we see that, and we uh, we find out uh, that the horn was taken at some point. Um, and again, I'm like, did I miss this? Um, was there was just one of those off screen? It happened off moment. Screen moment. Mm -hmm. That I felt like should have been included. Like it definitely it should, should have been included. I think it would have made Intar and Loyal more useful in this episode. Yes, they fought. And there was even a scene where Uno um popped up and then Loyal was like behind him. Like I guess he was trying to provide backup just in case he needed it. But it was like he was just standing there. And I'm just like, go with him, like fight with him like what why are you saying that like that like no um but um that's a scene they probably should have included less time with Nynaeve more time with giving us uh po possibly deleted scenes um oh yeah we got the opening oh yeah I def I definitely and maybe that that opening as much as I missed it I'm like that's taking time away. We could have included the scene with Intar and Loyal getting the horn. Like, <sighs> we only took thirty seconds. Only thirty seconds. It was already an hour. We, we could have had thirty seconds. Come on, just some type of transition of it. The most important item, the more than the most important items. Like you, you couldn't find time to show them getting that. I, I thought that was weird. Uh, again, I mean, yeah, because I, I, it was a missed opportunity because. Lanfear mentioned something too about the Quandiar to give to Bell Domon to throw away in the sea so it's not retrievable. Um, and I think that was for her to guarantee that they can't be sealed again. Um, but we'll see what Bell really does with that. Um, but we'll get back to Celine in a minute. But as far as um, uh, Inktar and all of them, there were some things that they left out that I was surprised, but I think it makes sense that they left it out because they didn't really give us enough stakes or enough of a connection with Intar to follow through with his arc, but he does die in the second book. So yeah. Oh, mate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, what's out there now? <laughs> Not bad, um, but mm, okay. Mm. I can't take that out of my memory. 
But uh, nah. uh, <laughs> it's, it's okay, but the way that they go about it is different. I won't talk about that. How about that? Okay. So we, we get a little we get a little bit of difference on the uh, on the yeah. Account. So it makes me think that they are switching a few people, or even it makes me wonder if even I don't think Bill Doman is a dark friend. They're trying to hint that he is, but I don't think he is. He was just he just happens to know Celine as Celine. Like I don't think he realizes that that's a forsaken. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that. I was just like, so go go wait at the boat. Like she's she's kind of playing her her human part here. Like what's what's going on here? Like, yeah, see, that's what I'm not a hundred percent sure about. Like because the Forsaken can use people and they don't know who they are. Right. They could be just regular people and they get used. Um, compulsion is a thing, so that's been established already or hinted at with Baron and the Brown Aja back in episode five, I think. Um, as far as what they think what happened with Sherim. So it's kind of like one of those things where, yeah, a forsaken can make you do something against your will or even make you think that it's your decision or, you know, just use you in a way that you don't realize that you're being used. So I, I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait and see. I'm gonna be a wait so, and see. So what you're saying is, we had time to establish seeds for season three, but not the thirty seconds to show us getting this horn. <laughs> okay, so another thing about the room that Intar was talking about, there were items in there that I felt would have been good for shadowing too, mm. and just having even Bell Domon get rid of that. I'm just wondering. Okay. Mm. Unless they're gonna establish that in later seasons. Again, I'm wishing they kind of just they kept I wish they had kept the scene with that with them in the room as far as like the objects that were in it. Because I think that would have been a good foreshadowing for later things, but it depends on if they're even gonna include it. I don't know if they're gonna include it because of changes that they're they're already establishing. So it's kind of up in the air. I don't know. It, it would have been nice. I mean, especially for me. Um, I would have liked to have seen the planning of this entire situation. Um, at least the conversation where that happened. Maybe I missed it. Uh, <laughs> it, it, but, it was. It, it, I mean, Loyal and Atar were just having a general conversation as far as like where the horn is. We don't know where Masima was kept. We don't know how he got out with them. We just know that Parent happened to find him. Now, granted, Again, because they haven't really established a good job of to uh, the concept of Taviran, a lot of coincidental things were happening, like Perrin meeting up with Intar and and Loyal, Matt meeting up with Perrin when he needed to to take the horn and blow it. Just little things were happening that were bringing them together. That's why they're Taviran. But again, they didn't really. They explained it in episode eight, but I don't think they really emphasized it again this season. So I don't know if they're leaving it on the floor or what, but coincidental things are happening to bring them together on purpose. Hmm. Okay. okay. Well, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> um, we finally, uh, you know, get back to that. We can finally get back to Taran, who has the coolest moment in the show to me. Uh, one of the coolest moments, I'm sorry. Uh, besides Egwene shooting off a giant fireball, uh, which I thought was really cool, uh, <laughs> I, I love her. Um, the yeah, we see uh, Rand use the force here and take out everybody with literally no problem here, like literally just takes out everybody. I was expecting a struggle, a fight. I mean, we see this this guy who's supposed to be this big imposing emperor captain who apparently everybody is just shocked that he got taken out so easily. Um, I am too. Mm -hmm. You expecting more here? This this is like a longer fight? Yeah, we were actually supposed to get funny, but at least that would have made his character a little more useful, but it's like he was there and he wasn't. So that was a little disappointing. You underutilized a black character and you killed him off like in less than 30 seconds. 
everybody dies. The one dude kills himself. He didn't even try to fight. Come on. I mean, I guess if it, after you saw that, I, I mean, I probably would have killed myself, but it seemed a little, a little extra. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it does establish a little bit of Sanchan culture, so. Yeah. It, it reminded me a little bit of Japanese, both, but um, as far as like uh, Mario and all that. But, um, but yeah, that was anticlimactic. Cool, but yeah. anticlimactic. I, I definitely. I, I actually had to like pause, and I was like, "Ain't this a y'all going? Y'all going? Y'all going to do this to Tara? Like, he wasn't there long, but dang, you could have given him a moment. <laughs> it was like he was posing, and then he dead. <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Absolutely sucks. I mean, and it, I'm sorry. When did we have a moment where Rand all of a sudden had control of his power? Did we? Did I miss that, or was that like last episode? I felt like he was he was like, I don't really know how to use this. He doesn't, it's instinct. Because it felt like he, he showed up to the party knowing how to shoot everybody precisely in the throat. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, cool. you gave him that cool moment, but you couldn't give him more cool moments with Ishi. I, I think that was what I was waiting for. I was like, okay, if you're not gonna do at least a little bit of sword fighting in this scene, are you gonna give it to me with Ishi? You didn't even do that. So that's why I was like, y'all did ran a little dirty. But at the same time, we do know that while he's learning forms, he's not really that good at it yet. So I guess it's probably fine that we didn't get what we were going to get in book two with the, with the fighting. But I was hoping for a little bit of something. Like you could have backed it up with the power. But they, mm, okay. Mm. I'm about to get on a rant. Yeah. I mean, that's we haven't gotten that far yet. You're still kind of going through the episodes. So I'm like, yeah. when we get to that part, that's when I'll be like, okay. But yeah, they did to rock dirty. <sighs> Sucks, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we see him take the horn. Um, we see uh, we see the hero. And what, what was his name? Uh, the guy who was like, man, I, we should just leave. Like, the horn is the most important thing. We, should, we need to get out of here with it. Oh, Inktar. Inktar. Yeah, he, he died. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was that was it. Again, not what I was expecting. Um, well, I was expecting him to die, but I wasn't expecting I was expecting a little bit more, like I said before. So um and then I was concerned about Masima. I was like, mm, mm. I'm like, mm, mm. Yeah. So I think I think my book reader is kind of maybe kind of guessing where I'm going with that, but uh, I mean we'll see. Um, but yeah, um, there's a lot of chaos, uh, a lot of fighting going on. Um, Egwene almost gets her, I want to say her hands chopped off um, before White Cloak blasts. That she saw coming, know. which I I could. I would be honest, I definitely missed that. She saw them down there. She looked down and was like, all right, I'm going to let them go. I guess she saw what they was doing. And she kind of Well, liked it. I think even though she her initial attack on the white folks was pretty much being petty because they did kidnap her and did almost kill her, especially Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. But then she saw them again actually helping people, actually trying to, you know, be of assistance to the people that they're pretty much attacking. Um, that they're also attacking the Sanchan, which who she hates. So it's kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. And so that's when she was like, no. Because if she hit another fireball, that would have hit the people just as much as it would have hit the white cloak. So it's kind of like, you're not worried about casualties here? You're not really, who are you aiming at? Like there are people in the streets panicking and not, you know, they're, they're running around in a panic. And you're attacking them at the same time that you're attacking the invading force. Right. So, what are y'all doing? Mm, not working. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, we we get a scene with the Forsaken. Uh, I mean, we, well, they explain about the endless cycle of the Forsaken, kind of fighting amongst themselves, and you know they're all supposed to be cool, supposed to be friends, family, um, and they keep repeatedly doing the same thing over and over again. 
um, at some point you think, you know, everybody will have a cheat code to how to beat them at this, at this point. Cause they just, they just keep doing the same thing. Um, and like you said, they're not, they're not reincarnating. They're the same person, but they're not, they're, they're aging, but they're not learning. They're not, they're not, they're continuously like repeating their mistakes. Um, as we have with the, you know, the whole thing with Ishii and his plan and like what he's trying to do. Um, and then Lanthier, I have no idea what she's doing, but you know. <laughs> yeah, she's all about her boo. Um, so she kind of gave him like a a leg up, so to speak. Right. But at the same time, it was kind of like she was leaving for fate to take care of itself. Like, I think she kind of knew just based on her spending time with him that he wouldn't really turn into the dark. So she had to make a contingency plan. So it's like, okay, if I help you, then at least you won't really come after me. You can come, go after the other Forsaken, but I'm still around to push you along to where you need to go to. But if I can also get you, like, i.e. a relationship, and you love me just as much as I love you, win-win. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I definitely, I mean, makes sense. <laughs> it actually makes all the sense. Uh, we cut past that scene with uh, Celine talking to the the shopkeeper, who I guess he's just trying to snatch up everything while he can. He's, I guess he's uh, he's he's looting. Got yeah, that's Bell Doma. We we talked about. Yeah, so we got we got that scene, uh, which again a, a seed we're setting up for another season. Uh, we didn't have time for that, but we couldn't got the horn. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, we cut back to the scene with Matt uh, still fighting uh, his urges uh, against this knife. Uh, I, I like that they kind of show this and direct this as though it's like he's fighting like 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 a drug addiction almost like you know like he's like he's like a fiend in the room just like oh, ah okay you know but he's been here before he knows he he knows how to avoid this and clearly he's better than this when he said he wasn't going to do it again he, he he wasn't going to do it again so uh you know he had to pull off a uh, uh kevin McAllister and figure out a way to to put the knife on a stick so he didn't actually touch it which i'm like okay is it not as long as she doesn't physically touch it, I guess that's how it works. Um, but yeah, he attaches to a stick. Uh, we see him, uh, you know, get out the room here because the the knife apparently melts doors like butter, or at least the lock, because uh, you know it's a magic knife. Um, and we come out and we stab the guard. One dude gets away again. Another, meet this another season three seed that uh, they had time for. Uh, <laughs> we uh, well, cover- okay, okay. Now we'll backtrack a little bit. Okay. We don't. You didn't even know if Matt could fight. So that thing. You are right. You are absolutely right. Uh, again, that thing we, you we had to be shown that Matt got some tricks up his sleeve. Mm. Y'all didn't know Matt could fight. I knew. Yeah, I never, but we, we never, y'all didn't we never, know. Never got the Rocky montage where we we saw him uh, fighting or learning how to fight. Uh, I would have. I, I didn't need it, I guess. But I, I really don't remember him doing too much in season one. I feel like, I feel no, like a lot of running and hey, I gotta go because this thing happened to me. I suck. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go on a, a, a journey of self loathing. I'll catch you guys later. Um, we we cut back to Rena, uh, who I thought was dead, uh, at this initial scene, uh, where the, the rock comes and blows up everybody, and everybody gets hit except uh, Egwene, who god, god dang it, she's lucky. I don't, I don't know how she keeps avoiding these situations. She should have died at least like 10 times in the show. Uh, but uh, somehow she just keeps getting away. Um, but yeah, we thought Renner's dead. She comes in. We They cut to uh, the the genie cuffs uh, popping off and the collar coming off. Um, and they pretty much show you, like, you know, give you an idea how that works. Once once one of the per- somebody, the person dies, the release is gone. Um, and then she picks up the collar, throws it on Renner. Uh, Renner. <laughs> and uh, it pretty much they have a whole battle of wills here, you know, because she explains that uh, only people who can, only women that can channel, it works on, which apparently I guess she could channel because she could see the weaves. Is that the same thing? If you have like the ability to do so, but don't practice, you still do it? Like You, you, still- you have the, you can have the ability to channel, but it's not like, um, Another thing they haven't really touched on a little bit. So there's there's people that are born with the spark, and there's people that can 
learn. Like it, it, it's kind of weird. So um, it's kind of like a part of like a, a, a and even I'm kind of confused by how that works. But um, there's people that are born naturally with it and they have a natural affinity for it. Whereas others, you can kind of teach them like they have it, but it could be dormant for like a really long time. Mm. Book readers, tell me out. Cause I'm <laughs> the, the concept is a little bit fuzzy for me, but um, there's, there's a, there's a slight difference, but the, the, the point is they have the ability to learn to channel. And that was something that they didn't know. So, um, <clears throat> or the ability to channel, they thought that it was just something that, they weren't demonic. Well, they are, because they can learn how to channel, or they can still see weaves. They can see people that can channel, and the fact that they're linked—you can't link with someone that doesn't have power. Yeah, um, as far as I know, I, I don't. I don't recall that being a thing. Um, again, one of my highlights of this. Unless episode, it's a bond. Unless it's a bond. But right. uh, one of one of my highlights in this episode again is is with Egwene. Um, in her final standoff against Rena, who I thought, you know, would have been more of an exchange here after all we've seen, all the episodes we just had to go through. Um, but I, I am still happy to see her get her moment. Um, even though I don't know if I'm pretty sure she's killed people before. I don't, I can't, I can't confirm if she's actually killed somebody in the show. Um, guys, let me know. I honestly can't, I can't count bodies here. I know Rand and everybody else has killed people, but. I don't know if she's ever killed anybody before. Um, no, and, she she's killed Charlotte probably, but she hasn't really killed anyone before, like a like a human being. Okay. Uh, so this will be an interesting uh, take because it is slightly different, but I'm glad that they did it this way because she needed we needed to get her licks in. She needed to right. get her moment as far as her overcoming this, and this is also foreshadowing. Hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that they they did it the way that they did it because it's, it's definitely foreshadowing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I was happy with that too because I, I I think everybody will be cheering when they see this. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, like just like I said, like you said, finally for her to get her hit back. Um, the lack of hesitation is what I really appreciated. Like she was just like, nah, I'm I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> and even though Rena like even asked, you know, almost asked for almost a moment to spare her, she's like, "Well, like if you die, if I die, you're gonna kill. I'm, you're gonna die too." Clearly, like again, like I said, battle of wills because she pretty much gave up and dropped the the, the cuff before she, you know. And then I guess by her doing that, thinking that she was gonna release her, and that was not the case at all. And I, I loved it. Um, I really appreciated that moment. <clears throat> yeah, Gwen said what she said. She said she was gonna kill you. She followed up on that. She gonna yeah. kill you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you and you got and you guys put all your faith in Nanif, thinking she was the chosen one here. Uh, and you going being jealous of her this entire time again shows her strength so many different ways in this episode, and I absolutely love it. Um, we, it it's uh, one of those things where she didn't really need to be jealous of Nanif, right? Um. So it's as as hard and and I wish she didn't have to go through what she went through to learn it, but I think that she has learned that she has her own strength. She she is powerful in her own right, and uh, we can only go up from here with the plane. Oh, there's so much good stuff coming with it. <laughs> oh my gosh! And as much as we hate Nynaeve right now, there's cool stuff coming with Nynaeve too. I just I just kind of wish that they did better with her in the season finale. Come on. You did amazing. Don't think I don't like you. I love you. I've loved you since Ninja Storm. I'm sorry, Ninja Steel. It's just the way this is written. I'm sorry. This It's not your fault. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. It, 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 don't get it twisted. The acting or the cast, I'm loving the cast. Like, yeah. even season one with its problems, I always loved the cast. So any writing problems, I'm not blaming the cast because the cast is doing what they can do 
with what they got and when they get good stuff oh my gosh it's great <laughs> yeah um we we finally see matt come in i'm sorry i'm sorry ran <laughs> comes in uh finally um uh, talking about hey i came to save you because everybody came to save somebody knowing that they were specifically there at this moment which i thought was hilarious um, yeah folks finally, rescuing themselves yeah he finally <laughs> gets there a second late i mean she killed her sorry hey I, I i was coming sorry i didn't tell you i was dead i wasn't dead we ain't got time for that let's go uh <laughs> And, get, and look who it is. As soon as people stand up, it's your boy she out here uh, trying to set up his master plan. And uh, his master plan apparently uh, uh, resulted in uh, Rand not being able to do nothing cool because he got shielded. And uh, Wayne got blasted across the room, apparently knocked out for enough time. Uh, and Rand gets, gets, gets shielded, can't do nothing. I just found that weird for him to be as powerful as he is for that still to be a thing that can so easily be done. I, he I hasn't like, had, he, he's still on instinct, but he still hasn't taken the time to teach himself anything. So, or get taught anything. So, um, considering Logan got gentle and he was shielded. That would have been one of the first things I would have wanted to learn, especially if I didn't want to get caught by the eyesight and potentially mm. gentle. But that's just me. But um, again, I, it's foreshadowing with Rand, shielding, all that good stuff. Um, and so this is where Moraine came clutch. Right. And thank God she had her powers back just in time. Well, she and she maybe it's a yeah, it, it, and it's a good thing that uh Lanfair placed them where they placed her. Um, so that was cool seeing her use her powers again. I was and she was posing, she was Moray was posing like she was like, a little bit more flair to it, yeah, right? Like, yeah, you can't, you can't just show them poke, you know, point their finger like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, they gotta uh, they gotta control the. The, the manner, the magic, and and show what they how to shape it, you know X Y Z, which which like you said I appreciate, and you know which again jumping back to my man land here catching that arrow by the way, that was just that was just amazing that was really cool and I, I and I was wondering like is that a thing where, like because like she saw it coming or they felt it coming or was that just his training in general that he was able to do it that, a combination of his training and when you're bonded with someone you get a little of a perk you get a little bit of enhanced ability so you can kind of like sense things um before they come now granted rima that didn't help rima but in general <laughs> uh they can you know fight better they can you know they're not tired as much and um they can catch arrows when they need to yeah yeah, I, that was pretty cool. I'm like, oh, he's using the force out here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, jumping back to the uh, betrayal that uh, nobody saw coming. Uh, uh, Land and Moraine. Uh, Moraine takes out the ships, knocks out the shielding. Um, <clears throat> and but at the, the same time, that's happening. Egwene is shielding a boy, Ran. Oh, and Matt stabbed Ran. Right, because by he was, accident, uh, by accident, uh, he he kind of. Could have waited a few seconds. I don't know. It, it was no right timing. Uh, but yeah, he, you know, that the mirror images, the astral projections, the you know, hey, you know, the, the Loki move, uh, <laughs> basically, like that, you know, nobody saw it coming. And of course, here comes Matt again apologizing. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in his defense, he wouldn't have known. I don't even think he realized that who he was, who he, who, who, who he was being manipulated by was a Forsaken. All he knew was that this dude is not someone that I want to be around. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then you're trying to like force me to stab my friend. And he had a good shot. If Ishi, Ishi could have died right then if he really wanted to die, but no, he had an astro project. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I just thought so. So 
is the knife the only thing capable of killing him, or could it have just been like a regular sword or something like that? Well, Rand did kill Ishi with a sword. In fact, the hair and marks. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I just I was just wondering like if okay, yeah, I guess yeah, that, that answers my question then. Yeah, it could have it could have but it seemed like that was kind of more of an enchanted blade type thing that was Well, the brand did use the one power with the blade. Ah, uh, uh, I see what they did there. I see what they did there. Oh, uh, yeah, I see what they did there. Now that the sword kind of like melted. Mm. Mm. And then um that whole scene was again squad up cuz it was like <laughs> Because yeah, Nynaeve and Elaine popped up with, you know, Elaine being able to heal Rand, and then he's like, you know, out of it, but he's like, who are you? Oh, who are you? <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I, I truly do apologize. So I said Egwene didn't, I'm sorry, Nynaeve didn't serve a purpose. She absolutely did. She was able to carry Elaine to heal Rand. So I'll give I'll give her that. Okay. She, she did something. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> She's, she's, well, she's it, it's not what I was expecting. Not just that. How about that? I was not just her. <laughs> I was not expecting her to just do that. <laughs> I was thinking maybe they could do it together. Maybe that would have been better. But eh, it is what it is. But yeah, Egwene's holding her own against is she trying to shield him. She she's holding for a while. She may not have been with the Sun Chen long, but she may have picked up a few things. She was like, mm. So good job, Egwene. So uh, again, she's showing her stuff. I'm like, yes, Egwene. Again, a lot of <laughs> foreshadowing in this scene. And again, squad up. Parent pops up too with the with the shield with the hair. Uh, the shield from the uh, one of the heroes. I think Uno had that shield. So yeah, everyone squad up. Like we we gonna shield Rand from these folk forsaken. So until he can do what he need to do to end y'all, and that's what right. happened with oh, Lorraine yeah. with this is. MVP to everybody, man, for 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 the uh, phenomenal job that was done trying to take this one dude out. Uh, <laughs> we uh, in the middle of, middle of the fight, we see, like I said, we get Rand get sealed. Parent, uh, uh, we see Hopper get killed, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, and you know, parent finally, you know, start the wolf out. And, and he uh, used an axe again. He used the axe and he killed his wife, and he used an axe again to kill somebody. In fact, it was Danny, uh, not Danny Bonehall, his daddy, Jeffrey Bonehall. So, <laughs> um, Junior is now upset, understandably, uh, and foreshadowing with that too, uh, because because. We had that brief moment, and even though I knew it was coming, I was like, "Oh, oh, oh, good foreshadowing there." And then what happened happened again. Good foreshadowing him being understandably upset, and him probably wanting revenge. So good set up there. So I'm just like, "Oh man!" And the fact that parent again used an axe to kill someone when he was trying to avoid doing that, it was like he was so enraged because of Topper. That, that's the best boy. Yeah. Um the spirit so, yeah. pulled up too, which I thought was was pretty cool. Yeah. I I, I was like a new as soon as Balda was attacking Pam was like Topper's gonna come through. And then he did. And then I was like, oh yeah, Jeffrey Bond gonna come through. Okay, okay. And I was still upset. I still cried. I was like, why am I crying? I know this was coming. <laughs> Different, but I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, that sucked, man. He told him to stay back. <sighs> told him to chill back. He did. He did. But Hopper wanted to. He keeps getting away. Like, what? You just got. It's like the second time I've seen you get bit by a dog, bro. <laughs> like, oh, was that the same arm that he was having in a sling in the first place? I don't even know. But it would be hilarious if it was. But I'm like, time. can someone end him, please? But uh, I think we're going to wait. Yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> so the the whole heroes of the horn thing was was extremely cool. Um, I I, I, I replayed that a few times while I was waiting for you to finish up uh, watching oh. the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Confused is like okay, the people that were in the horn mm -hmm. were, were they people that already existed? Because it was the one dude that died like some episodes back. 
was there. Um, so, and hopefully they'll kind of explain this uh, in the next season. Um, and I wish they kind of did it this season because it would have emphasized the importance of the horn. Um, okay, so there are people that cycle through that are pretty much heroes. And Matt remembers himself being a hero. But this is slightly different because they introduced the concept of past lives, at least where Matt's concerned with Ishii now. Yes, he's the father of lies, but this is a thing with Matt. And so they enhanced it with him being a hero, uh, meaning that he's lived past lives and he's been a hero in each of his past lives, or several of them um, at least. So which makes me think maybe there were iterations where he wasn't a good guy, but there were enough iterations of him being a hero that makes him feel better about himself. And he's not a prick like his dad. There's something that's good. And that's what he's wanted this entire time to feel important and to feel like he can contribute something. Even when he was with Perrin and Loyal and them, he's like, I don't want to leave you. But he had to leave them. It was important for him to, you know, get the horns ran. So it wasn't like he was abandoning them. He was on a mission. So it still make him feel useful. And then he felt like he was by himself. He blew the horn. And now his memory, this is, again, a different way that they're establishing him remembering his memories or his past lives. Um, but I do like it. Um, this was a nice change. So, um, and it was important that he blew the horn. I was like, if Matt don't blow the horn, I'm going to be pissed. So I'm glad he blew the horn. And the way that they did it was so cool. Um, and the fact it was so nice to see Uno again, but I was really hoping that Matt would have at least mentioned some of the people, like the names of the people, because they're important, especially little blonde chick with the arrow. I'm just like, y'all couldn't, y'all couldn't say her name. Ugh. Um, but it was nice seeing Uno and, and the person that talked to Matt saying we fought, you know, beside each other. You couldn't say his name either. Oh, I thought we was gonna have more time for the explanation. I mean, seeing as how this is a key moment in Matt's story right now, we we didn't have time for that. But y'all can give me a few more seconds with that. But when he's when he spoke in old tongue with the charge, I was like, yes, 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 because that's one of his phrases that he likes to speak in the old tongue, and I'm like, yes. I was cheering. I was clapping. I was like, "Yes, we get to hear them perform. We get to do their thing." Even though it was a smaller army, I was kind of wishing they did had a bigger army. But you know what? Small potatoes. We got something cool. So, and then of course seeing Uno again. I'll say that like fifty million times because I wasn't even expecting to see Uno. So that was a nice surprise. Um, we had enough time to. to oh, oh, and another thing that's established with the Heroes of the Horn. You can be added as a hero like if, if you yeah you can be reincarnated as a hero multiple times multiple lives all that, that or you can do something really cool and get established as a hero so and it's and it's interesting how when he blew the horn the squad they emphasized the squad i was like oh i see what y'all doing there y'all okay all right cool nice very one of my favorite Hands down, one of my favorite moments from this episode. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, you know, not not to hit this hammer on the head, this nail on the head, but again, another reason for why you would think you would want to show with this thing being so important as it is, to give it more time with the heist and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, so. small gripe. Yep, but yeah, that that. Well, even this season, they could have. They did very little explanation of the horn. They only gave us like a couple of minutes of exposition in the finale. They could have done a better job establishing why this is so important. They kind of hinted at it even in episode eight, but who's going to remember that? Right. Y'all could have sprinkled a little bit here and there, even with Loyal. Just someone could have been explaining the importance of the horn other than what we got in episode three, where, you know, people were using the, the, the hunt for the horn as a way of getting rid of poor people. Like there are different ways that the, the hunt was used. Don't get it twisted, but you're still not emphasizing the importance. So that was a downside to this season because the great hunt is about the horn. <laughs> yeah. 
Homer being the key factor here, guys, but um, and that's why there was a great hunt. <laughs> but um, yeah, that that's that was the only uh, I think negative I think for me with the emphasis of the horn, even though it was a very cool moment, and the fact that yeah. we could have gotten some name drops. Yeah. I would have wanted some name drops. Um, so just to fast forward this a little bit, we see we see Rand stabs Matt because he's supposed to. It was prophesized. You mean Matt stabs Rand? Rand? What? Matt stabs Rand? Why did I say that in reverse? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt stabs Rand. So we see that uh, with with the magic dark knife, uh, a, a wound that looks looks like it didn't heal. I was kind of confused. I'm like, I, I thought this. I thought the knife was kind of like evaporating people. Like it was like. Like burning it, it, it's very bad when you get stabbed with that knife. Uh, and while he's stabbing people, yes, they were pretty much disintegrating, but time was of the essence with Rand because of how powerful he is. And the fact that Elaine, you know, kind of healed him, but not healed him, like she kind of like put a, 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 a band aid yeah, on the wound. Yeah, mm, that's a little foreshadowing. foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> um so I, i'm how about this like i wasn't expecting it so soon and the way that they did it is different but it's still important so i guess it, i guess they had to do it early so they can move on and focus on other things but also come back to it i have right. a feeling about it. um so yeah we, we after that we see them come out come back beat the bad guy turns in the dust as he sees two birds cry you know, uh, you know in a prince moment there uh but then he uh he turns in the dust uh they beat the bad guy we celebrate uh we see uh moraine shoot off the mortal kombat dragon uh above above <laughs> them uh, <laughs> of kind of you know signaling you know the prophecy you know the dragon you know everybody's ranting you know the first time in like this these two within these two seasons that we actually see them be kind of welcome as heroes or you know whatever they they're not running for their lives. Um this also puts a new a new light on the dragon the dragon which I think kind of makes him untouchable going forward with the eyes to die because now he's like this public hero. Um mm. do something to him that's gonna cause a riot. Um mm. <laughs> I'm touching something there. Uh but mm. uh <laughs> but yeah so we get that and then you know we like I said we end end everything there. Um we didn't cut back to Landfair. She's setting up her master plan. Um, and this is where Well, I think she was going to let him out, but I think it was going to be on her terms instead of Ishii being ahead of her and letting them out ahead of time. Because I think she needed to be in control of them and kind of like get an idea where they are. Because again, at the end of the day, she's probably going to try and help Brand anywhere she can uh, to get into good graces. So um, she was trying to move chess pieces, but Ishii was ahead of her. So. We get introduced to Mogadine, who's one of my favorite Forsakens. Um, Lanfair, like, they're already setting her up to be, ooh, I, I'm really excited for her. Mm. Um, and they did name drop Samael in the opening um, sequence. So we are getting Samael as one of the Forsaken, because they did downsize the Forsaken. So we kind of like, have an idea of the women, but we didn't know as far as the men. We have an idea, but not all of the men are going to be on the show. So Samuel is definitely one of them that's going to be on the show. Um, so she has like a seems, seems like they all have like different powers or abilities um, or access to certain magic. Maybe maybe they have like a like a base magic thing. Or but it's like because um, we see we see Ishi kind of like using fire like fire based attacks stuff like that. Um, and again, I, I might, but I mean, like, she's kind of doing like a spider web type thing. I mean, it could just be like a spell or whatever it is, not like a specific, you know, this is like a fire type person, I mean, this is like a grass type person. <laughs> no, and again, they're just really good at certain things within the one power. Like, there's they have their signature kind of like weave, and Mogadine is spider like, which is they definitely emphasized in this episode as far as her introduction and how she kind of like tries to shield uh land fear or you know express her power her own power um and you also get a glimpse of 
you know, how maybe the other Forsaken, including Lanfear, felt about Moldedine, but oh, she's gonna have, she gonna prove herself. So yeah, um, some good things are gonna be coming with Mogadine, and I can't wait. Okay, so we're gonna get more of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much uh, our, our episode there. Um, we get that little uh, after credits ending situation after the, 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 the heroes have won the day. Um, and um, yeah, um, great episode. Uh, I mean, I really don't have too much to say. I don't want to linger on too long. It's a really great episode. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, after just you know mentioning all of the problems that we just mentioned and the the things that were not explained within the spaces of the of the show, um, I mean, I, I can kind of get over it, but some of it is just too important to not have highlighted. Um, the horn, the, the it's just everything involved in that, you know, and, and a couple other things. Um, like I said, just kind of not forgivable for me. Um, like I said, overall, still a great episode. I mean, it doesn't. I really hope we get that season three. Um, overall, I mean, I mean, you said you liked it. You, you thought it was a really great episode. Um, did you did you have anything kind of closing this out that you wanted to hit on or talk about? Just that, as far as I know, they're definitely filming season three, and now that the writers are have. You know, the strike is in it. The writers, I'm super yeah. glad that they get what they want, that they deserve it. Um, I hope the actors get what they want because again, we we need better. You know, they need better protections. Um, they need to be able to make the money that they need to make, um, and get the health care and all that good stuff. So, um, I'm holding out hope for the actors. Um, but yeah, as far as season three, I'm pretty sure they're already filming it. It's just a matter of making sure that they can continue filming it because I'm hoping the ratings are enough and there's enough buzz, especially with this finale, good buzz, that we can move forward with even later seasons because there's just so much cool stuff. Like, And I yeah. want to be with y'all. I want to experience it with y'all. Uh, book readers, uh, non-book readers, um, I, I, just so much stuff. Like, <laughs> Pray, y'all. Just pray. Um, yeah, especially since uh, season three is supposed to focus on a lot of book four, probably uh, some of book five too. It wouldn't surprise me, but especially since we just got introduced to the ideal, there's more cool stuff with the ideal. Like, there's more cool stuff happening with these characters that I want to see it, y'all. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, look, I, I just want to say, like I said, it was a great episode. Um, I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this entire season so far with you, uh, being able to get the insight that you have on the show, the knowledge. Um, you definitely have made this fun. Um, you know, I feel like if I was to do this on my own, I would have just been confused. I mean, I, it, it's, you know, just, but you definitely have given me a lot more insight into what's going on. Um, I, you know, definitely want to probably hit that library up and definitely uh, get those books because I definitely want to read. Uh, but at least up to that point, just so I can read what the differences are. I probably still want to keep the the future of the show hidden to a certain point, but I definitely want to. Um, it. Well, I mean, if you still read books one and two, again, there are characters that I mentioned this last week. There are characters that are introduced earlier that you haven't seen yet um, that are probably coming in season three. So um, as long as you're kind of like aware of that and maybe some concepts, uh, that maybe haven't been established yet that you may get a hint of in the first two books. Um, I don't know if you should read book three because I don't know if they're going to include some elements in book three anyway, even though the focus is going to be on book four. I mean, you can chance it, but um, again, because the stories are somewhat similar, you may be okay. okay. And, uh, um, Uh, maybe just do books one and two for now. <laughs> books one, and two. okay. I, 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 I will look for one and two. If, if you're following the show, like as far as these is, or the books that they're doing, so that on uh, audio book is is read by Rosamond Pike, so I might I might get into that. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I I am an audio book reader with the OG uh, narrators Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, so um, I haven't had a chance to listen with Rosamond Pike. But um, I, I enjoyed listening to the series. In fact, it's it's a lot harder for me to read it, ironically, even though I'm mostly a reader. 
like mm. the like this is one of the few series that I really enjoyed listening to. Um, and maybe like one other series uh, that I enjoyed listening to or even reading both the book and listening to it. So yeah, it's definitely a good series. That, that and you know, the way that they narrated it, the way that they emphasize it, like the I action scenes, the way they pronounce things will be different. That's why some of us book readers are like, how is this pronounced? Oh, all right, we're, we're pronouncing it like that, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, a lot of descriptions, a lot of uh, sayings that maybe haven't been as said as much on the show. Uh, again, this, this series was written or started, like I wanna say the 80s, early 90s, so take with it what you will. Uh, so. Yeah, okay. Well, guys, you, you know the beat. Uh, leave us a comment. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought about the episode. Were you as thrilled as uh, did you did you have the same plot holes that boggled you down as you watched it? Did it bother you? Um, let us know what you thought about our, your overall experience with us as you've been able to do this week to week with us and have this conversation as we talk to you as you talk to us and uh, give us the new. But yeah, uh, definitely said I definitely enjoyed doing this. Uh, I can't wait for season three. Um, Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought about this night's episode, which was uh, what was meant to be uh, directed by uh, our new favorite director, Miss uh, Sanaa Hamry. Uh, and uh, Nat, was there any closing remarks that you had before we left out of here? Um, just that I, I enjoyed doing it with you too. Like just seeing how you take a certain scene or certain aspects of the show as a non-book reader uh, versus me having some knowledge of what's happening. So it's it's a good give and take for sure. In fact, yeah. it makes you more hype and in it. If it makes you want to read the books, then I did my job. <laughs> yeah, I, I and the show did its job too. I did my job and the show did its job. So well look, we appreciate you guys for watching. Leave us some comments. And uh we'll see you uh next time for season three. Season That's three. Probably. See you guys. All right, bye. Ain't nothing on my mind, oh no